What if you could build an AI agent that could cold call for your business 24 seven to fill up your calendar with meetings with potential clients and customers? Well, this is exactly what I've built. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through it and I will give you the exact template so you can start using this within your business with just a couple of clicks. So first, let me show you it in action and then I'll get behind the scenes and show you how it works. Let's get into it. Okay, so to demo this, I have got a table with an air table with a number of leads, just five or so. And you can see here, I've got two of them, which I want to call. Now you could set this up and have uh, thousands of leads within here. You could even have another automation, which uh, got these leads automatically for you. Um, but within this scenario, I'm going to pretend that I am a web development agency that builds websites for uh, trades businesses. So plumbers and electricians, I actually used to run this business. So it's very applicable. So we've got two leads here that we want to call and try and book in a meeting with. And here's the workflow here within NA10. And let's start it over here and it is going to trigger this workflow here and it's going to do a few things before it calls me it's going to uh, check my calendar it's going to create a script and then it's going to call me using vapi and here you can see on my phone i am receiving a call hello hi there is that jake yes this is jake hi jake this is mark from web solutions uk how are you today yeah very well thank you glad to hear that i noticed that precision plumbing uh comey doesn't have a website so we took the initiative to build one for you Oh, really? Okay, that's cool. Great. I'd love for you to take a look at it. Would you be available for a Zoom call with my boss, Matt? We can go over the site together. Uh, yeah, sure. What are you thinking? I'm available tomorrow, June 14th, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., or after that, any time until 5 p.m. Yeah, 9 a.m. tomorrow works. Yeah, yeah, 19, 9 a.m. tomorrow. That's good. Perfect. I'll set it for 9 a.m. tomorrow. I'll send you a Zoom link shortly. Looking forward to it, Jake. Great. Brilliant. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so it has done that first call. And if we look over at Airtable, you can see it's filled in some information and it's gonna go through, review that call and update some more information. Any second now, there we see, we can uh, see the information that it's filled in. And what it's gonna do is it's going to then call the next one on the list. So you can see it's updated the call ID. And I've got another phone call. This time I'm gonna be Laura, I think. Hi there, is that Laura? Yes, this is Laura. Hi Laura, this is Mark from Web Solutions UK. How are you today? Yeah, good, thank you. Glad to hear that. I noticed you didn't have a website for Apex Electrical Services, so I took the liberty of building one for you. Right, okay. Uh, why? Yes, I'd love to show it to you. Would you be available for a quick Zoom call with my boss, Matt? Are you trying to sell me a website? I understand, Laura. This is more about showing you what we've created and no, getting your no, feedback. No, I'm not interested. Please do not call me back ever again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so there we can see we had uh, a lead that was not happy to be called. So we will see that uh, in a second after this phone call has been processed, it tags it with do not follow up and obviously no meeting time booked. If we go over to my calendar, we can see I've got a website call with Jake from Precision Plumbing tomorrow at 9 a.m. as we specified. And AI will go through this list of leads, no matter how big, contact all of them and try and book in calls to show them these websites. Now, how I used to do it was that when we'd book in a call, that's when we would create the website. Um, we didn't actually have anything to begin with and then we'd show it to them on, this, on the call and then just try and sell them on that website. Now, as you can see from the call, I haven't spent a lot of time making the actual script good. Um, so the script does sound very AI, but that's a very easy thing that you can change. Let's have a look at technically how it works and what we're doing here. So we are using a tool called Vapi to make the calls. We're obviously using N8N. This is a tool that we're using here in order to uh, orchestrate the workflow. But the tool we're using for the call is called Vapi. This is Vapi.ai. It's very cool. It's good for inbound and outbound calls. Okay, so to walk through how this works, let's have a look. So you can see here, we've kind of got three flows within one. Now, the first one is simply triggering this workflow manually. We could trigger it by lots of other things. You could have it triggered by webhook and therefore you could build out a proper platform on this. But just for tutorial purposes, I've just triggered it manually and that's going to call this workflow. Now, the reason that this is a separate workflow is that you will see that we are actually triggering this workflow at the end of a call um, after we've processed the call, which is why we want to make it triggered by an external workflow uh, so that we can call it from anywhere and kind of make it modular. So the first step is calling this workflow here. What we're doing is going to Airtable and we are getting um, whichever leads have the status of to call and we're just getting the first lead. And as you can see here, this was the, uh, the first one, Jake Harrison, that we called first of all. Then after we've got the details of the lead, then what we're gonna do is check my calendar to see when I am free so that when they're asking about booking in times, the AI knows, okay, these times are free, these times are not free. The important thing here is that we are going to my calendar and we are finding all the events that I have in my calendar between now and this time tomorrow. And then it takes all of those events and puts them uh, into an edit fields to make a list of all of those meetings. 
Then once we have all of those meetings and we're aggregating them so that we put them all together just in one string, we send that string over to an LLM model. And the prompt here is asking to give us back a sentence or a small paragraph or so telling the, uh, the scripts, so we can pass it straight into the script, when am I free? So you can see here the output is for tomorrow, uh, June the 14th, 2025, you have a meeting from 10 a.m. to 10.05. Therefore, you're available for calls uh, from nine till 10. And then after that, for the rest of the day, I'll put some guidelines in here to say I can only accept calls between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So essentially what this step is doing is looking at the things that I have in my diary, and then it's going to give me some text saying when I'm free over the next two days, looking at those things which are in my diary. Now, if you want to go over this in lots of details, you can download this yourself and have a play around with it. Look at all the prompts, look at everything that I'm doing. You can download it from the Applied AI Club. This is my free community. Come in here and you can simply download it. It'll be somewhere up here, the, uh, the JSON for it. You can download the JSON, bring it into NA10, and you will be able to run it and have a look at it yourself for free. So this uh, large language model chain here, this is producing us uh, a little bit of English, which we're gonna put into the script so the AI agent knows uh, when I'm free or not. So this next step is then setting up the script. And we're passing several variables into this. So if I um, open this up, now this is a uh, API call over to VAPI. And what VAPI allows us to do, let me have a look at it here, is it allows us to have assistance. And assistant is essentially, you know, a person, a caller that will call whoever we want to call. And Vapi is really good because you can set up loads of different things. You can see how much it's going to cost you. You can change the uh, AI provider. You can change the provider of the voice. So you may have noticed that it didn't sound super, but if I set it up with 11 labs, it's going to sound really, really good. But obviously that affects the price too. So if you want to make this better, you can... Um, change the price so that you can work with the best AI models, you can work with the best voice models, you can have a look at the latency and try and reduce that latency by using different models. If you play around with the uh, models, you can see how much uh, you're gonna pay and what the latency is going to be. And you can set up all the details over here within VAPI. I'm not gonna go into too much detail within VAPI. If you wanna know more, obviously do come across to the community and uh, we've got some videos upon VAPI there. So what the next step in the sequence is going to do is it is going to uh, get this assistant, the ideas here, and we're using the API, and we're going to change what the, essentially, what assistant prompt is, what that uh, assistant should be saying. So we're passing in things. If I open this up, we can see we are passing in um, this part here, which is the times that I'm free, which is taken from the previous steps. We've been passing that in. So uh, your availability for the calls is the following, and then what we got from the previous step. Then we're passing in the uh, details of the lead. So the contact's first name, their last name, and their business name as well. And then we are passing in the first name into the first message, because you'll see here, um, the first message is what they're gonna say first. So we're gonna say, hi, is that? Now it's not here, um, but when we are passing it in through the API, it puts in that first name. So hi, is that Jake in this scenario? And that's creating the script. So once the script is created, then we have this other API call where we are calling VAPI and we're passing in all the information we need to call this person, which really is just uh, the phone number. And this is my phone number, so I'm gonna blank it out so you can't see it. Um, but all we're doing here is calling the API and saying, give this person a call from this assistant. And you can see here, we're also passing in the assistant ID. So that's obviously the assistant that we just set the script for. So that's actually making the call. So as soon as we've started the call, so this is just starting the call here, we're gonna go over to Airtable and we're gonna change a field called recent call ID because we're gonna need um, this call ID in order to um, then change this field later on in the next workflow. Okay, so that is how we are starting the call. So we start the call and we pass in all the information, we get the script generated. Um, and again, as I said, the script that I created for this video is not particularly fantastic as you probably saw. So you can spend a lot of time if you want to implement this yourself, building out the script so that the AI agent will speak a little bit more naturally. Now, um, what we are doing then is we are waiting until the phone call has ended and then VAPI is going to call this webhook that we've got here. So now within VAPI, what we can do is go over to the tools section and there's a lot you can play around with, which I haven't really done this tutorial. So there's lots of ways you can improve this. But we go over to messaging, which is at the bottom of tools and open this up. This is where we can enter in a webhook. And as you can see, this is uh, my NA10 server and we can make it send these calls to this endpoint when certain things happen. So when the call ends, which is the really important part, when the status updates, uh, where there's a hang up, you can see, in fact, if I go over here, we've got some things which have failed and that's fine. That's where 
it's sending through some events for some of these other things, which I don't really need. Um, and therefore the data is not in the right format and it doesn't come through properly, but that's fine. We don't need that to work. But what we're doing here is on uh, this webhook here, we've got our endpoint for the production side of things, and we are simply dropping that into VAPI. And then it is going to call this URL when something happens, including the end of call report, which is the really important thing. So when the call ends, it's going to fire this webhook from VAPI. And we can see if we look into this switch, we are making sure that the type of call that's coming back from VAPI is the end of call report. And if we look over to the trigger, we can see we've got a load of great information coming back, including the summary from the call. It auto creates us a summary. Uh, there's the prompt. Here is the transcript. So hi, is that Jake? Yes, this is Jake, Co Jake, et cetera, et cetera. We've got the entire transcript. So the next thing that we're doing is we are taking that transcript from the VAPI information. And we are using a text classifier to see from the transcript, was a call cool booked? Uh, was their interest by the client, but no call was booked. So maybe they said, yeah, sounds interesting. Let me get back to you on some times or like, can I call you back? Can you call me back? So they're interested, but um, no call cool booked yet. Then follow up. So maybe this person says, oh, I'm not that interested, which is fine. We just need to follow up with them in you know, two weeks time or a month's time, three months time. And then we have people who respond badly, which we don't want to follow up with. We don't want to annoy them. Um, so we can tag those based upon uh, whatever the response was from the call. And then that uh, goes out into different flows here. So depending on what happens in the call, we can do different things. So if the call is booked, what we're going to do is we're going to extract information from the call. And what we're going to extract with the information extractor is uh, the agreed time of the meeting in the format of etc. Keep in mind that the today's date is whatever the today's date is and that it's British summertime because that's where I am. Um, so the date is likely to be around then, which makes sure that uh, we get back the date for the correct year. This is one error that I was running into when I was trying it out was it would come back in you know 2023. And that 2023 comes from the time in which the model, which we're using here, uh, which one are we using for a mini when the training set was, when the training data was from. Um, but we're overriding that by passing in the date. Then what we're doing is we are going over to Airtable and we are updating a few things. We are going to update the status, which is going to be meeting scheduled because that's what flow we're on. Then the meeting time and then the summary, which we're pulling from what VAPI gives us. And we're also using that recent call ID. If you remember, I spoke about that a little bit earlier and that's how we're finding the right thing to match on Airtable. So we're changing Airtable, updating the status, and then we're going over to Google Calendar and booking an event in my calendar with the correct time for an hour and then calling it website summary with, and then whatever their name is and whatever their business is. And then after that, we are going to call this workflow again. Um, and it's gonna start all over again, finding the next person um, and giving them a call. So there we go, that's the workflow. It's relatively simple. And as you can see, and you saw in the demo, it's not particularly um, sophisticated in terms of how I have written the script. If I was actually doing this for real, I would make the script much better and I would go over iterations and iterations, see which ones work well, see which ones don't work well, and try and do more of that. I would be changing the latency um, within VAPI in order to make it reply a little bit quicker. So these are all changes that you can make if you come over to the community, download this for free, and then you can have a play around with it and actually have it working. So you can be calling leads 24 seven uh, and actually booking in meetings with clients without having to cold call, which everyone knows just sucks. So there we go. Now I didn't go into everything in super depth. So if you do have questions that you want answered, then do come over to the community or leave a comment down below this video and I will try and get back to you. That is it for this video. I hope you have liked it. I hope you found it useful. If you uh, have liked it, give it a like. If you want to see more videos like this, then please do subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.